Another DLC character means another new update, likely accompanied by a new balance patch. There haven't been too many significant buffs and nerfs since the game's release, but that never seems to stop us from getting our hopes up. Technically, anything can happen in a balance patch. Characters who struggle to climb their way out of bottom tier can become legitimate threats, and dominant top tiers can be stripped of their glory. No one is ever really safe. It's interesting, though, to think about how a character can actually be changed to decrease or increase their competitive potential. In some cases, a slight adjustment to one move can have gigantic results. We saw things like this in Smash 4, with Donkey Kong and Bowser receiving amazing grab follow-ups that made them legitimate secondaries at top-level play. Other times, however, a character can receive many changes, but stay more or less the same. We've seen many low tiers in Ultimate receive this treatment, where lots of little buffs aren't enough to drag a character out of the bottom. This is also evident in Smash 4, where Diddy Kong was nerfed considerably over multiple patches, but remained a top tier for the entirety of the game's lifespan. In this video, we'll be looking into the right tactics needed to buff the unluckier characters in Smash Ultimate. If you want a full spread of how good or bad every character is in Smash, you can check out our full tier list on ProGuides.com. Simply click on a character there and you'll find even more information including guides and moveset descriptions. When you join Pro Guides, you'll also get access to exclusive pro courses taught by top players and coaching via Play With Pros. In our What Makes Bottom Tier Characters So Bad video, we went into the key factors that hold a character back. You can check out the video yourself to learn more, but here are some of the main factors. Lag. If a character has poor frame data, they'll struggle to play reactively, and it will also be difficult for them to combo their moveset together. Having slow moves will also hurt a character's disadvantage state and ability to escape combos, while having lots of end lag will make the character more committal and easier to punish. Improving a character's startup and end lag can be a big or small buff depending on how it's implemented. For example, if a character receives buffs that reduce end lag on many moves that have high knockback, they'll be improved by gaining safer KO options, but this won't boost them too much. On the other hand, if lower knockback moves receive ample end lag reduction, a character can gain tons of new combos, potentially including valuable KO confirms. This kind of change can be very significant. Likewise, if a character gets faster startup on many moves but still has too much end lag to combo out of them, it's a small change, but if they already have good combo starters, this can unlock new follow-ups and greatly improve the character. Next is mobility. Slow characters are rarely good in the competitive metagame, and this goes for ground speed and air speed. In fact, even the speed of a character's initial dash is very important. This is one of the reasons why Wolf, a character with very slow run speed, has a solid ground game with an amazing dash dance thanks to his great initial dash. Also, Captain Falcon is very fast on the ground and in the air, but his initial dash is sluggish and hurts his ability to move around on the ground. Improving movement speed values is actually very rare in Smash patch history, but it has happened. Improving a character's run and or dash speed not only grants them a better ability to traverse the stage, but this can unlock new combos as well. Many combos require a character to either follow up on the ground or move on the ground first to set up positioning for an aerial, so a ground speed buff can be very beneficial. Air speed also affects combos, and it can have a huge impact on a character's disadvantage state and recovery. Aerial mobility makes it easier to drift away from juggling attempts and gives you options to mix up your landing without even committing to an attack. Offstage, the faster you can drift back to the ledge, the better your recovery is, which is why Krom can often get close enough to air dodge to the ledge and doesn't get gimped nearly as much as his up B might imply. Some characters lack damage output and or KO power, so even if they have good combos and mobility, they can't close out stocks. Adding a KO confirm is one way to fix characters like this, as mentioned before, but buffing damage and knockback is an option as well. Due to how knockback is calculated, this can be a bit difficult because boosting the damage on a move without changing its knockback will typically increase the knockback anyway. On some moves, this is a great buff as it can increase both damage output and KO power, but this can also be a trade-off for combo tools because more knockback usually makes it harder to follow up from a move. A good way to buff characters with damage and KO issues is to increase damage on moves that are typically used for taking stocks like smash attacks and back airs, and reduce knockback on combo moves so their damage can be raised proportionally to maintain the same knockback that lets them combo. Alternatively, a move's knockback growth can be altered such that the attack combos even better at low percents and switches to a KO option at higher percents. Airspeed does help recoveries a lot, but even with good airspeed, some characters will find it very hard to recover safely if their recovery specials are lacking. Moves that lock characters into one direction instantly limit a recovery, eliminating a dimension of mix-ups and requiring the character to get to a certain position before recovering. 
Recovery moves that have no hitbox aren't inherently bad, but they typically make the character much easier to edgeguard or at the very least two frame. As a much simpler point, some recoveries just don't travel far enough, which makes it easier to gimp them and decreases the limits of their edgeguarding ability. To buff recoveries, startup can be made quicker, distance can be added, as well as better hitboxes or even intangibility frames and potentially a more flexible angle. We didn't mention intangibility before, but adding this to any move will make it much better, although it's not always the most fun to fight against. Now that we've laid out some realistic ways to buff a character, let's look at specific examples. Little Mac is considered by most to be the worst character in the game, and for a few huge reasons. For one thing, his aerials are intentionally designed to be borderline useless, and secondly, his recovery is abysmal and travels such little distance with little angular flexibility. In Mac's case, it'll take an entire rework of his archetype to properly buff him. They already gave him a move that KOs at 30 and can't be shielded, so it's proven that even the cheesiest cheese isn't enough to make this character good. Little Mac can still be a character with a great ground game, but playing in the air is essential. And I mean, he's a boxer. Why are his punches even worse in the air in the first place? So to buff Mac effectively, give him a set of real aerials, a forward air that could be spaced with, a back air to zone out an edge guard, a nair to anti-air or break combos, a, a down air that spikes, like, like with actual knockback, and an up air that combos into itself or at least lets him juggle. This would be accompanied by an increase to his aerial acceleration, as his air speed is actually already quite fast, so he can recover better and move around in the air a bit more. Speaking of recovery, increase the range on his up B and side B, allowing up B to snap to the ledge. With these buffs alone, Mech might actually be kinda OP, so there would be a balance of nerfs to keep him from getting out of control. The armor from his smash attacks could be removed, as well as increasing the lag on his forward tilt and probably slightly nerfing the knockback on his smashes and F tilt as well. His KO punch would no longer beat shields and won't KO until at least 80%, out of range for anything to combo into it. With these changes, Little Mac would be able to play in more situations, still have a very strong ground game, but slightly weaker in exchange for an average aerial set and recovery. Kirby is another character often considered to be very low on the tier list, and despite recent buffs, he continues to be lackluster. The main issues with Kirby are mobility, lack of combos, and lack of range. Kirby's airspeed is incredibly slow, which is particularly detrimental considering he spends a lot of time in the air as a floaty character with multiple double jumps. Characters like Fox have pretty slow airspeed too, but with a much faster fall speed, this becomes less of a hindrance. Because his airspeed is so slow, Kirby's aerial approaches are very obvious, often forcing him to close distances on the ground where he's a bit quicker. Both his ground attacks and aerials have such little range though, resulting in a character who struggles to get very close, but needs to in order to get anything started. Once he does find his way in, Kirby doesn't get too much outside of some low percent throw combos and up tilt strings. To be buffed effectively, Kirby needs at least an average airspeed for starters. This will let him mix up his approaches and also help him escape disadvantage and recover more safely. Also, his frame data and knockback will be adjusted in order to increase his combos. Up air could see a significant reduction in lag to make up air strings a consistent combo option at some percents, and forward air and up tilt could receive increased hit stun and knockback growth such that they combo better into aerials at mid and low percents respectively. These buffs are designed to keep Kirby's range untouched, as it would be a bit hard to imagine those clown shoes reaching much further on a character who may or may not lack legs entirely. So what character would you like to see buffed, and how would you buff them if you had the choice? Let us know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe to ProGuides and turn on notifications for more Smash content.